welcome my name is Deborah Darling and welcome to the first video for the worship leaders coaching course now the title of this video is what is worship so before we begin I'm just going to do a quick introduction about myself and my journey to becoming a worship leader when I was seven years old I went into lessons to learn how to play the piano and when I was 17 is when I first picked up the mic to lead worship at church well let me tell you it was a disaster I had no clue what I was doing but I had seen other people do it and I just copied exactly what they were doing <coughs> mistake big mistake just like many people I thought worship and praise leading was just singing a number of songs and ending in 30 minutes and hoping for the best and hoping that people would join in now music and singing is all a part of worship but today we're going to dig deeper we're going to dig a little deeper into what worship actually is stay tuned for i have been leading worship now for almost 10 years the first six years of me leading worship were the most interesting and the reason why i say that is because i didn't really have the closest and best relationship that i could have had at the time with god it wasn't until the latter four years and um, that I really grasped onto what having a relationship with God actually is. My thing for everybody is to become the best worship leader that you can be for the congregation that you have, is to first become the best worshiper that you can be that is acceptable unto God. And what is true and acceptable worship? Now Romans chapter 12 verse one gives us the best definition of what acceptable worship is and it says present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and well pleasing to god this is your rational act of worship now what does it mean to present your body as a living sacrifice what does that mean for me that means to actually have the posture of your heart to have the nature of your mind the things that come out of your mouth and your your, your conduct how you act how you behave all in line in submission to God his will his work and his ways and how do we do that by studying the Word of God you study the Word of God to show thyself approved and the reason why you must study the Word of God is because the Word of God also has the laws of God the Word of God also tells us how to behave as Christians how to think Romans 12 um, verses 2 also says be not conformed to the things of the world but be transformed by the renewal of your mind renewing your mind renewing your mind how do you renew your mind reading the Word of God something I say to everybody is you cannot worship who you do not know you cannot build a relationship with somebody you don't talk to you can't build a bond with somebody that you don't communicate with so what must we do to have a true relationship with God communicate with him communicate with him how do I become a worshiper I must have a relationship with God I must get to know who this God is prayer through prayer and if you do not know how to pray it starts with something so simple as just thank you God and telling God who he is so I'm just going to give you a few tips on prayer I'm going to give you three tips on how to pray number one I want you to list five things that God is to you then I want you to list five things that God has done for you then I want you to list five things that you want God to help you with there you go they are prayer points for you to go and pray on so you begin by telling God who he is you then give him thanks for what he has done and then you can tell him all of your problems and then you ask for his will you plead the will of God and you plead the blood of Jesus over your life and there you go you have a prayer now you don't have to use this formula of prayer each and every single time you pray but it is helpful and it is useful now in terms of reading and learning the Word of God I always tell new new converts to start from Genesis and read the book of Genesis because Genesis has the creation story and then also to go and read the gospel of Jesus which is Matthew Mark Luke and John starting with the book of John here we learn about Jesus we learn about salvation we learn about how we have attained salvation the Bible says that it's time for the true worshippers to worship God in spirit 
and in truth. And how do we go about that? So I'm going to break this down. First, we are going to talk about worshipping in truth. Now, worshipping God in truth, I believe knowing the truth of who God is. So like I mentioned before, you can't worship that which you do not know. So worshipping God in truth is finding out who this God is. Who is God truthfully? What does the Bible say about who God is? Who Adonai is? Who Yahweh is? Who Elohim is? You go into the Bible and you find who God is and ask yourself how do you get to know people you spend time with them you communicate with them you have activities with them that's what I'm gonna urge you to do in order to get to know God you're gonna have to spend time with him you're gonna have to spend time digging into the word you might not understand the word that you are reading but I tell you as it deposits into your heart there will come a time where that word that you read that you did not understand will become very, very valuable. Now the enemy tries to come and lie to us and tells us God doesn't love you. He tries to tell you you are not good enough for God. He tries to tell you that you have sinned so much that God is not going to hear your prayer. That is why it is very important that every time you go into God's presence that you repent. Every time you go into God's presence you ask for forgiveness and you receive his forgiveness. And the reason why this is important is that when you leave yourself out out of the forgiveness of God separation begins to settle in that is the time that you begin to condemn yourself because you begin to you begin to listen to the enemy more but the time that but if you have but if you have covered yourself in the forgiveness of God you don't walk in condemnation you walk under the covering of God's love um, and that is very important because God is a forgiver. God is all loving. God is all giving. God is, an, he's just so amazing. So this is the time now for you to actually get to know God. That is worshiping him in truth, knowing who he is, the truth of who he is. And then the, the other part of the truth is you doing it in truth and know that you're not lying to yourself you're not doing it because other people are watching you you're not doing it because other people have told you to but you're doing it because you want to do it that is your truth you are truthfully worshiping the truth of who god is does that make sense <laughs> the other part is worshiping in spirit now god is a spirit and the reason why the bible i believe I believe the reason why the Bible tells us to worship him in spirit is because this flesh does not want to worship. This flesh wants to do what the flesh wants to do. And that's the reason why the Bible often tells us to die to the flesh. Die to the flesh because the, the flesh always has something it wants to do. The, the flesh wants to sleep. The flesh wants to eat. The flesh is tired. The flesh wants to party. The flesh wants to go outside. But the spirit man is connected to God. God made us in his image and in his likeness in the spirit so when you worship god in the spirit you worship him in the image that he made you in when he made you in the flesh form he molded you according to what he also wanted the reason why you must worship him in the spirit is because it confuses the enemy the bible also tells us that we don't war against flesh and blood but our war is spiritual so you must therefore worship in spirit let me tell you this is also a form of war because the enemy is always trying to stop your spirit from worshiping and how he does that is through the flesh so there must be an act of obedience in the flesh which will then transpire in the spirit what i mean by that is if i don't begin to open these fleshly lips how does my spirit then begin to worship Am I making sense now? Now, when you know the truth of who God is and you then worship him truthfully from the bottom of your own heart because your pos the posture of your heart is towards God, your lips will then begin to follow because why? You have taken your body to become a living sacrifice. As the flesh begins to worship, the spirit man will then also begin to worship. When the spirit man is then worshipping, you are fully connected to God. God wants the true worshippers. God wants those that worship him fully in the flesh and in the spirit and really know from the mind, from the lips, from the heart, from every single part of you. He wants your worship. And I tell you, 
once you begin to cultivate this lifestyle of worship your role as a worship leader will begin to change and transform so now i want to reshape your mind i want you to understand that being a worshiper being a worshiper being a worshiper in spirit and in truth being a true authentic worshiper starts with realigning your priorities, realigning where you spend your time, realigning how you think, realigning the posture of your heart and this is something that we pray about and this is something that we actively do. This is something that you have to work towards because our human minds get fixed on a certain type of habit. The posture of your heart can change according to your habits. Whatever you have formed as a habit can eventually change the posture of your heart or in effect or effectively it creates the posture of your heart so if you are a habitual drinker your heart goes towards drink now if you create the habit of speaking to God and the habit of reading the word of God the posture of your heart then begins to go towards God the lifestyle of a worshiper is constant communion with the Holy Spirit Matthew 15 8 says this people honors me with their lips but their heart is far away from me so we don't want to be the kind of people that are just talking about this God, that are just telling people about this God and telling God how awesome we are. Our hearts do not reflect what our lips are saying. We want our hearts and our lips to match the worship that we speak of. And the Bible has already told us to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. So that does include my heart, that does include my lips, that includes everything as a matter of fact. You want to become a dedicated worshipper before you become the dedicated worship leader so i want you to read romans chapter 12 make notes let these scriptures embed inside of your heart the book of psalm says thy word i've hidden in my heart that i might not sin against which means that if my heart is inclined to god if my heart is towards god if my heart is focused on god my lips will follow my heart's posture and when my lips follow my heart my heart's posture i will begin to act and do the things that i am required to do and i will be walking as a living sacrifice and then i'll be giving god true and proper worship so i want you to dig down inside of your heart and ask yourself where do my priorities lie what do I spend most of my time on? What do I spend most of my thoughts on? Do I give God enough of my time? Do I give God enough of my thoughts? Do I do enough for God? Am I speaking to God regularly? Am I reading his word regularly? I must be able to do this because really and truly on that stage it is a true reflection of your heart and of your lips. But I want us to remember that as worshippers we must get worshipping right. I can't give you the one, two, three, four, five, six steps of how to worship, but I can advise you to say, hey, check your heart, check your mind, check what you're doing, and see if you are giving God true and proper worship. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to read Romans chapter 12, read Psalm 119, read Psalm 23. So on your reading list, Psalm 23, Psalm 119, Romans chapter 12, Ephesians chapter 3. Go and read these scriptures. Thank you so much for watching and this is the end of video number one and have a great day.